Hello everyone, welcome to KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon North America 2023. Thank you for spending time and attending this talk. This session is pre-recorded and I welcome you virtually. And I am honored to present to you a journey of building our Kubernetes platform, successes, failures, and valuable lessons learned. But maybe first I can tell a bit about myself. Who am I? I'm Marian Falakoli. I am a cloud engineer at Relax Solutions. Relax is a supply chain and retail uh, planning platform that helps um, retailers unify their planning from demand and merchandise to supply chain and operations. Also in my free time, I sometimes write some technical articles on my Medium account, so feel free to find me there or on my LinkedIn, and I'd be more than happy to uh, get to know you and get connected. So today's agenda are the following items. Uh, I'll first give you a timeline history about our project. Then we will uh, take a look at some technical details and project structure. After that, we can take a look at some statistics of usage of platform within Relax. Then I'll uh, explain about advantages that we think our platform has brought within the company. And after that, we can dive into the lessons that we learned during the uh, journey of building this platform. And at the end, I'll shortly mention some of our uh, future plans. So first is projects and timeline and history. Let's start from 2019 when the project was born. Um, project was initially created for a specific internal development team that was willing to migrate their workload to Kubernetes at the time. As for cloud providers, Azure was chosen already by management due to other reasons which was not related to Kubernetes service. Um, so it was an obvious choice for the team at the time to go with Azure Kubernetes service. So a few consultants were hired to create the project and project was born at the end of October 2019. 2020, the project was changed to be a unified Kubernetes platform within the company. In January, I joined the company initially as a site reliability engineer uh, in one of the development teams within Relax. In March, uh, there were already five different teams that started using the platform, and my team was one of those. In April, uh, there was one internal employee who joined the team uh, to work uh, alongside the consultants on the project. And in October, a massive merge request related to the migration of service principles to Azure managed identities were, was merged. And unfortunately, it became a major incident and a reverse of the change uh, was applied within two days. Also, the second internal employee was recruited and joined the team. And one of the development teams and decided to leave the project as the result of the major incident. Let's get a pause and take a look at failure scenarios in the major incident. Uh, what was not working? Well, the first item was that rights were missing. The developer had the required permissions while they were testing, but users didn't have the required access uh, permissions and rights to delete the uh, service principles when they were rolling in the change. Second point uh, was about search manager. Uh, the search manager wasn't working properly alongside uh, local analytics. Uh, because Log Analytics was creating its own managed identity and Site Manager couldn't handle uh, multiple um, managed identities at the time. Then the third uh, problem was about an ingress nginx. Uh, and ingress was not I was taking uh, having timeout because it wasn't able to get an IP address from the internal network due to insufficient service principle rights. And the last uh, problem was about authentication. After a clean install of the migration change, uh, authentication was not working properly, uh, except when an admin login was used. So overview of 2020 is that it was decided uh, to change the scope of the project from a team-based infra platform to a company-wide Kubernetes platform. 
there were so many repeated configuration and uh, um, configuration codes uh, among different environments of different teams that it was decided that let's use Trigrant, uh, tri which is a Trigrant wrapper, and uh, it helps um, for keeping your code dry when working with multiple uh, Trigrant modules. 2021, the team grows. In February, there were five different teams and 14 different environments uh, that were using the platform. In March, I was also uh, joined to the uh, team that was working on the platform and uh, tests were developed further and robot framework tests were added to the project. Uh, in April, uh, semantic versioning was in place. Uh, before that, there was no versioning and uh, teams were required to deploy their changes based on the master branch. And you can imagine that they needed to do uh, that, um, all of them approximately at the same time, so that master branch of that, that is released and development team of platform can uh, continue their uh, development. Also resource tags uh, became mandatory at that time and a start and stop automation was created for, the, for our development clusters uh, because there was no reason in um, having those uh, tests and development clusters uh, running 24 hours and it helped us to decrease our costs. In October, second try to merge the changes for managed identity happened and it was successful, fortunately this time. In November, security patching is a standardized. Um, it included Helm chart upgrades, uh, provider upgrades, and chart run and chart run upgrades. Uh, and also full access uh, privileges for platform developers were dropped and instead um, we used access packages and uh, rights were segregated to those access packages um, and users could activate uh, the packages and have the needed rights uh, for a, a specific uh, time. So 2021 overview is that project grew and more teams were willing to use the platform. So a special team started forming around the platform project. And uh, at the end of uh, 2021, we had a team of three internal members uh, that were working on this project. 2022, the project gets more mature. In January, we started having release blog posts um, mentioning the features, bugs, and the instructions that were needed for our users. Uh, in February, we started migrating environment configurations to a separated repository because until then the core uh, code of the platform and uh, environments uh, code were all at the same uh, repo, but it was a hassle. Um, uh, there was problem with access rights uh, among us and the users, so we decided to make it a separate repository. In March, uh, deployer service principle, uh, the service principles that we were using in our deployment pipelines for deployment of changes of the platform to users' environments, those service principles had too high rights and over all environments, subscriptions and resources. So we thought it's not quite secure this way and we did some segregation uh, on service principles and their rights. In July, uh, three new permanent team members joined the team, which was a nice thing. Uh, in August, uh, we had a change of our release strategy. Until then, we had two weeks release cycle, but it wasn't enough time for our users to keep up with the change. Uh, so based on the feedback that we got from our users, we uh, changed it to be a one month release cycle, two weeks for uh, them to deploy the changes of platform are under uh, dev and test environments and do their acceptance testings. And then they had two more weeks to deploy the changes on their productions. In September, we had sort of a major incident, but only for one test environment in one of the uh, team's environments. And it was because uh, one of Azure created resource groups uh, was deleted manually in Azure portal uh, by a user. So in response to that, we figured that we did have to add uh, resource logs to all the resources that are created by platform. 
In November, uh, a sort of stop module was developed to uh, decrease cost uh, and uh, our users could use of it to turn off their development clusters uh, during non-working hours. So 2022 of our view is that project became more mature and more people joined the team and it became a team of six permanent internal members by the end of that year. 2023, time for supporting features. In April, feature testing process was changed. Uh, until that moment, we had only continuous uh, deployment testing uh, on based on uh, each uh, merge to master branch. But we figured that we also have to test uh, changes that are coming in uh, latest version uh, compared to the previous version. Uh, so that was also added to our automated tests. In May, we had some feature requests from user about service mesh. So we ha had our investigation and we came up with LinkRB as the solution. So that's a feature that started and is under development. Uh, also fully automated deployments were added, meaning that until then some manual operations were needed to be run by our users before each actual uh, platform deployments. For example, a Helm uninstall command might be needed or track run import or a DLS a resource. And all of these um, move to be a, a automated a script that can be run before the actual uh, deployment pipeline. Then in June, we had another uh, feature request by our users to have a shared cluster like a, a shared cluster that can be used by different development teams, but it uh, would be maintained by us as the platform team. And development teams can um, deploy their applications and the different workloads can be isolated based on the namespace. So this was also a feature that was added in June and it's still under progress. And in September, we migrated from AKB to Kubernetes, the project that can be used for syncing secrets between Azure Key Vault to Kubernetes resources uh, like Kubernetes secrets. And that upstream project uh, was poorly maintained and there weren't many contributors uh, recently didn't have much releases. So we decided to change the project to external secret operator. So overview of 2023 is that uh, there was enough time for us to add supporting features based on Teams requirements. Now we can take a look at the uh, project structure and more technical details. Here we have a high level architecture of the platform. You see AKS in the middle of a, an Azure subscription. And then uh, we have other Azure resources such as Container Registry, Key Vault, uh, Postgres databases. And then uh, for deployment of different components within each cluster, we use uh, Helm charts. Uh, we, for example, have Nginx Ingress, um, which is responsible for exposing services from Kubernetes cluster to the public or private internet. And then um, the ingress controller is linked to an Azure load balancer, which uh, either gets a public IP address or a private one. Um, then we have Cert uh, Manager, which is Certificate Management Controller for Kubernetes. It automatically creates and manages TLS certificates and um, TLS certificates for the ingress objects. And it uses Let's Encrypt for issuing certificates. In the platform setup, uh, each cluster gets its own DNS zone. So external DNS uh, monitors the creation of new ingress objects and it automatically creates DNS records for new ingress uh, ingresses within the cluster zone. Also, we have other components such as Datadog for collecting logs of the applications and Prometheus for collecting metrics from cluster itself and applications workloads. And then uh, these metrics are visualized in our centralized uh, observe uh, solution that we have within the company using Grafana dashboards. Then I already mentioned about uh, AKV to Kubernetes. And finally, we have Cured, which is a 
um, Kubernetes daemon set um, that performs safe automatic node reboot, reboots when it's uh, required. Here we can also take a look at our shared responsibility model between our team and development teams or our users. Uh, in the very top, um, very down level, uh, we have Microsoft, which uh, provides us the infra. Our team provides an infrastructure as code, productizing features, security of the platform, and maintenance of it. Then you can see that we have optional modules uh, shared among us and development teams. Uh, the reason is that in case development teams have capacity and they are willing to, they are uh, welcome to collaborate and um, make some of these optional modules based on their requirements. Then the development teams are mostly responsible for their content, their application, containerizing uh, the application, and uh, deployment and maintenance of their uh, clusters, uh, application security, and operating application service. Now we can take a look at statistics of usage of this platform within Relax. Well, at the moment we have 13 um, user teams uh, from which 33 uh, are non-production and uh, 47 are production uh, environments or clusters. Then we have 22 mandatory Terraform service modules, uh, which provides the main core of the platform and it's necessary for all the clusters. And then we have 42 optional service modules, which um, provides different services for different user teams according to their uh, requirements. Now I can talk a bit about uh, advantages that this platform has brought to the company of course, from our point of view. Uh, and first item is a standardization and unification. The project creates reusable components, tools and documentations that makes it quite easier for development teams to work together and follow the consistent practices. And uh, this results in uh, improved code quality, reduced development time and enhanced knowledge sharing among teams. Then the second benefit is security and compliance. Uh, project implements the best practices for access control, encryption and vulnerability management. Also all platform changes are tested uh, for security before deployment and security patching and upgrades are also taken care of. Then uh, the third benefit is about cost optimization. Uh, platform project takes care of identifying and implementing uh, strategies to make efficient use of resources. This could be about right-sizing infra, leveraging cost-effective cloud resources, or automatic, uh, automating uh, resource provisioning and deprovisioning. And last but not the least is faster development cycles. Uh, project create uh, can be used uh, to create and maintain a standardized development environment so that uh, development teams uh, do not need to make their own uh, infra and they can start uh, coding immediately. Now we can dive into the lessons that we learned uh, during this process. And uh, first, I want to emphasize on the major incident that we had and uh, mention some of the lessons le that we learned during uh, that incident. And the first one is that it was a big change. The merge request itself included the changes for um, migrating from service principles to managed identity, as well as some other changes for cert manager and Nginx uh, ingress. So it was a really massive MR. Uh, the second point is that there weren't enough testing at that time. Unfortunately, we didn't have, we didn't uh, have much in automated testing and also the manual uh, testing scenarios were not extensive enough. 
Then the third point is that there wasn't uh, any rollback plan. Uh, the plan was overconfident and no one thought of a failure scenario. The fourth point is that deployment procedure, procedure had limitations. Uh, there was no versioning in the project at that point, as I mentioned. Um, at some uh, time later, we added semantic versioning. So deployments uh, were happening from master branch. Um, there was a dependency between different environments for their deployments. Uh, however, deployments to the development uh, clusters was happening automatically, while uh, production ones uh, were manually. And the last item is that uh, we think it was a major change in uh, a immature state of the project. So uh, the project state was not ready for having such a massive change. Now we can take a look at uh, other lessons learned uh, from other aspects. Uh, and the first item is having an internal team. Um, just having consultants to build such a big project which can be unified within a company is not enough because knowledge sharing uh, doesn't happen properly and uh, having an internal team is really important. Having a, a constant members who can uh, uh, share the knowledge and uh, be around at least for a while until the project gets more mature. Then the second uh, point is about the standard standardization. Um, well, not all the development teams have some DevOps uh, person or DevOps knowledge. So it, it is really important uh, that we as the platform team provide uh, standard um, procedures and uh, this would help them to understand what's happening and how they can uh, operate um, within their environments. Sorry. Then the third uh, option is about uh, documentation. Well, again, uh, knowledge sharing can happen uh, really good uh, with documentation. So we try to provide uh, best practices, blog posts, and release blog posts. And all of these helped a lot uh, for our users to understand everything better, how platform works, uh, how they should uh, follow the instructions to deploy the changes to their clusters and so on. Another lesson was about cost optimization. You should think of different possible approaches for this, for example, resource tags, and this, uh, in, uh, a sort of a start a stop automation for the clusters that are not needed to be uh, running 24 hours. And uh, another point is, is feedback. Um, development teams are our users, so it was really important for us to hear uh, what they think about the platform, how easy, hard is it to use it, and having a product owner helped us a lot uh, for this understanding. Um, and because of that, we find out that our release cycles uh, are not um, suitable for our users and uh, we changed uh, the procedure that we had uh, for our uh, releases. Then, uh, next point is prevent incidents. Uh, you should uh, use uh, any possible way to prevent incidents. For example, having resource logs when it's possible or soft delete policies and backup options for any kind of resource that is available. And last uh, but not the least uh, important is security. Uh, for example, deployer service principles should be segregated and not one service principle shouldn't have uh, access to everything all the resources. Uh, and the second point is about access packages, uh, having those whenever possible to segregate access uh, for different users. 
And finally, our future uh, plans for the project. Uh, I mentioned previously that we started having service mesh and a shared cluster. And um, we just added these features. However, we are just waiting for our users to get those into use. Then we can see what's working and what's not. And we can improve on those features, of course. Then we would like to have global load balancing for stateful applications, uh, web, application, uh, web application firewall, and uh, it would be nice for us to enhance our secure uh, testing strategies as well. Yeah, so these are some of our uh, plans for the future. And that was it. Uh, thanks a lot for being here and uh, joining this talk. I hope it's been helpful and informative, and I'd be happy to answer any question if you have in the chat.